while we want to sustain our relationship with Egypt. Our traditional cooperation cannot continue as usual when civilians are being killed in the streets and rights are being rolled back. As a result, this morning we notified the Egyptian government that we are canceling our biannual joint military exercise, which was scheduled for next month. Going forward, I've asked my national security team to assess the implications of the actions taken by the interim government and further steps that we may take as necessary with respect to the U.S.-Egyptian relationship. All right, folks, uh, welcome back to the Steve Molsberg Show. And as we've been talking about uh, throughout the show, uh, the violence uh, in Egypt uh, continues, and um, the President of the United States making uh, actually interrupting his golf game uh, to, uh, to make that announcement today. Uh, joining us now is someone uh, you're going to love to hear from, because there's no better authority when it comes to uh, uh, Iran, what's going on in Iran, and the uh, Khomeinists uh, who uh, run Iran, the Ayatollahs uh, in charge of that country. And we say hello to Banefshe Zand. Uh, hello, Banefshe. How are you? Very well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Well, it's Steve. my pleasure. Iranian, uh, born in Iran, uh, Iranian writer, film producer, human rights activist. Um, tell us, first of all, tell us just a little synopsis of, of your story and, and your father's story. And uh, uh, it's just an amazing, uh, amazing thing to hear. Mm -hmm. Well, um, my father uh, was sort of the... Uh, Nelson Mandela Václav Havel of Iran. He was one of the leading intellectuals who, after the revolution, the Khomeiniist revolution of Iran, uh, in Iran in 79, decided to stay in Iran because he never uh, had any love for the Islamist uh, powers that had been uh, angling for uh, control for, well, over three centuries in Iran. I mean, we have long memories in that part of the world. Uh, so my father, who had been a very successful journalist in the West, he had been a film uh, a film theorist and film critic, as well as a political uh, analyst and reporter, uh, one of the first to ever interview Eisenhower and Nixon and so on, uh, self-made, uh, basically stayed in Iran in order to make sure that the culture of Iran is not lost through the manipulation of the Islamist powers that um, had hijacked the country at that point. Um, he was arrested several times, being that intellectuals are generally a threat to that regime. And um, the fourth time he was kidnapped in 2001 and uh, put in prison for uh, what turned out to be eight years of the 11 years, uh, tortured. He was 72 when he was kidnapped, so uh, by 2000 eight when we were able to force the Iranian regime to let him at least be under house arrest where he could get medical attention and so forth. Um, he had had three massive coronaries, uh, survived it all, and uh, because of the pressure that we had brought to bear to bring him out of Iran in 2011, the Revolutionary Guards poured into his house and they basically uh, grabbed him by his arms and legs and threw him out of the sixth floor balcony and then they pretended it was suicide. Unbelievable! It, it is. It is. It is unreal. Um, and and I, I, I want to fast forward to, to where we are today, and with regards to Egypt and and the Middle East and Africa. But let's focus on Egypt first. Um, you know, in this country's support uh, for the Muslim Brotherhood, which I'm not surprised, unfortunately. Uh, but but so talk to me about Iran and what role, if any, is Iran? Who are they rooting for? Who, who, are they doing anything? Are they are they supporting the the uh, the Morsi people? Are they are they hoping that the military wins out? What, who are they? What what are they seeing as they as they look from outside, and are they doing anything on the inside? Well, you know, um, the, Iran. I should I should be very specific in explaining that Iran has a huge presence all across Africa, and Egypt is certainly not an exception. Uh, you know, there are major Shia strongholds in Egypt. Um, the um, the Sunnis, being the the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, factions of them, of course, are no fans of the Sunnis. How uh, of the Shia is, excuse me. However, the fact is, is that the uh, the Muslim Brotherhood has been very much propped up and helped by the Iranian regime for over over uh, four decades. Um, they have, um, you know, the, you know, for example, they have had representatives of the Iranian regime at, who are 
Ikhwan, who are Muslim Brotherhood, act on their behalf uh, throughout Europe, one of them specifically being the grandson of Hassan al-Banna, um, Tariq Ramadan. Um, who was working for Iran's press TV out of their London and Rotterdam studios. And so that relationship has been, in the terrorist sense, uh, very, very strong and has been around for decades. Um, that said, the Iranian regime does stand very much in support of the Morsi people. Um, as you know, the Iranian regime has very actively been, uh, you know, arresting Christians and uh, anybody essentially who speaks against or, you know, stands what, in what they think against the identity of uh, their, um, their version of Islam. And so bottom line is, is that the fact that the Morsi people are now setting, setting fire to churches, killing 10-year-old cop girls throughout Egypt, uh, and basically trying to turn it into a uh, Muslim stronghold, it is something that the Iranian regime is 100% backing. Um, that said, again, uh, Sudan has been one of the, one of the m most um, avid and, uh, and, and steadfast fast allies of the Iranian regime since the very beginning of the Khomeiniist takeover. Um, in fact, uh, the Iranian regime has, was, was, was uh, present in the Sudan when Carlos the Jekyll was, uh, was um, arrested, and they had, in fact, offered Carlos the support of the Iranian regime. Hezbollah already backed him anyhow. And now we find that, in fact, there are fingerprints of the Iranian regime on the Benghazi attack. Uh, so all uh, throughout uh, throughout various parts of Africa, uh, now you see the involvement of the Iranian regime, specifically in northern Nigeria, in Mali, um, in the Horn of Africa, the Ivory Coast, uh, Burkina Faso. Uh, they are very connected to Robert Mugabe, who is uh, allegedly helping them in um, the um, importation of uranium uh, to Iran. Uh, and um, there have been many, many cases of the various governments of, uh, you know, the actual government of Nigeria uh, finding huge amounts of arms that have been shipped to uh, various ports in Africa by the Iranian regime. Yeah, we're, we're, we're talking to Ben F. J. Uh, Zand here on the Steve Malzberg Show, uh, Iranian writer, film producer, human rights activist. Um, so tell me... Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, it, it is amazing, and you and I, uh, we agree on almost everything here, and, and you and I agree that uh, the, the lack of will, as you put it, uh, uh, on the part of the, uh, uh, the international community and, and, and the United States specifically uh, with regard to Iran and stopping their nuclear program and making sure they don't become a nuclear threat as well uh, is, is just uh, dangerous and, and amazing. But also, t tell me where, where you believe Israel is. I mean, is Israel going to actually allow it to happen, and is Israel um, capable, in your view, of, of of taking taking that nuclear threat away if they decide to do it. Um, look, I I, I have uh, forever and ever said that um, it you, you know to attack a country that uh, whose eighty eight ninety percentile uh, citizens loathe its regime, its government, its ruling class uh, is is a, a fool's errand. Um, I think that from my impression of what I um, see within the various uh, you know strata of the Jewish and Israeli uh, organizations and government and so forth, um, there seems to be a sort of an ambivalence. Um, let me interject here one thing, and that is that Iran's nuclear is one thing, but what nobody is talking about, and this is where the Iranian regime has has everybody checkmated, uh, and yet again silence the silence on this on this. Are you talking topic. about their satellite? No, no, I'm talking about forty thousand trained suicide bombers who are go. deployed and or deployable uh, through various fake passports, Mexican, Venezuelan passports, uh, Bosnian passports. You would be amazed at just how much uh, has gone into it. And by the way. Not all of them are Iranian. Most of them, in fact, are not. Some of them are Afghans. Um, some of them are Syrian. 
Some of them are Lebanese. So any action that Israel might take or we might take in conjunction with Israel or anything we do or they do that Iran considers provocative or an act of war, they unleash these uh, suicide bombers Indeed. all over the country, including, all over the world, including in this country. Indeed. I mean, you know, we're talking about, you know, one bomb uh, in, 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 you know, and I, and I know that I'm, I'm not for the, for the, for attacking Iran at all. However, the thing is, is that having spoken to many, many people who have been, uh, you know, bouncing this idea around for, for many, many years, um, I, I have been assured by many people that if, if, in fact, this happens, and I really hope it doesn't, that it will be, um, you know, it would hit areas where there's no civilians and so forth. But that said, it's still a fool's errand because the Iranian people loathe that regime. And had it not been for Obama pulling exactly what he's pulling now in Egypt, um, had he not pulled the same, same story in 2009 and said that, you know, backing the Iranian people who were calling on him for support would be essentially meddling in the Iranian affairs, um, you know, as he's doing right now with Egypt. Had he stuck by the Iranian people, then, you know, Iran, the Iranian regime would have been toppled by now. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, it, it, it's a tough question, certainly, if you're Israel, because, uh, you know, uh, what do you do? Uh, you know, and, 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 and you know that the you better than I that the regime there uh, and the, uh, the Ayatollahs uh, believe that, uh, see, that, that we can't have mutually assured destruction as a deterrent the way we did with the Soviet Union because the uh, Soviet Union didn't want to get blown up and neither did exactly. we, but you're dealing with a regime that says if we all get blown up and the world ends, then the uh, imam will come back yes. and we'll all go to heaven. Yes, exactly. So, it, is, so. it, is, it is by no means uh, anything that deters them. They are happy, you know, their entire, uh, they, they, it is not the culture of life, in other words. Yep. It yep. is the car culture of martyrdom and culture of death. And it is a mindset that uh, I'm sorry to say that a lot of people in the West just have not grasped fully. Absolutely. Ben Afshay uh, Zand, it's been a pleasure. I hope you'll thank come you. back. Um, I would be delighted. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you.